On January 19th of 1924, a short story by Richard Connell was first published in Collier's Magazine, The Most Dangerous Game, also known as The Hounds of Zaroff. Why make a movie of The Most Dangerous Game? So here's the thing, The Most Dangerous Game is a really old film. As you know, it was done back in 1923. No one's really done a really good adaptation of it. So we wanted to tackle something that would be short, quick. The story takes place over a good three or four days. Our film is all one day. Larry and Dan are people I've both worked with before, but this is the first time they really had to engage in multiple blow combat. We did some riflemanship in the woods. We did trap setting. Action. Sword fight. Oh God, Rainsford. Lots of different things, but uh, when you're working with professionals, it just goes really smoothly. Have you guys did, read the book? Did you uh, read yes. the book before shooting? Yeah. I read the story online, but I didn't read the book. <laughs> he read the cliff notes, yeah. I read the book. Uh, I've no actually character? read this book several times. You Whenever have. they first called Mip about it, I was like, oh, I already know this story. I swear, part of that story has been pulled into so many different kinds of movies and shows. And I always thought it would make a nice short film, so when I pitched to Dustin, hey, you ever heard of this story? And I told him the synopsis, he goes, that'd make a great short film, write me a script, so. Since you had people in mind, did you build any of the adaptations around those actors in general? Nope. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we had a story and we were gonna go straight for that because the idea was to be close to the book as much as possible. I think Dustin was the first one to tell me, he's like, hey, I think we're considering you for General Zaro. And of course, you know, Dustin and his general happy manner, you're like, yay! Wait, I have to hunt people? <laughs> okay, yay! Zaroff was probably the most difficult person to pick. I wanted a really good actor. It had to be someone who could do a Russian accent uh -huh. and also had to have that sort of charisma that he has, even though he's kind of the scary, creepy dude at the same time. General Zaroff, it was kind of fun because he's got that cockiness to him that's like, I've seen everything, you know, you're nothing new. But along the lines of he found something that was definitely new to him and a new experience that kind of upped the ante and until he realized that the doors were closing in on him. It's a very great pleasure and honor to welcome Sanger Rainsford. Daniel, tell me about your character. Um, I play a character referred to as the Tin Man, and I am going with Dorothy and her friends across the land called Oz. I was told we were gonna do a musical, and it was gonna be great, and then when I got here, it turns out it's in the woods with mosquitoes. How are you guys like your characters, or different from them? I talk. Yeah, <laughs> in real life? <laughs> yeah. His lines were a little shorter than mine. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yvonne has clothes and the hunting knife. For you. My role was Ivan, a deaf, mute, partially blind Cossack. So I was Larry's henchman and manservant. <laughs> so. My name is Sanger Rainsford. I fell off my yacht. I was very excited about we were going to do like an underwater scene where I fall off a boat and land into it and I thought that was going to be like amazing and what I didn't know is when you fall against water like 30 times in a row there was bruising involved. Uh, oh. The next few days I was, yeah, it was a good time. Most dangerous game, scene F1, take one. Action. A lot of physical activity. We did a lot of running in the woods part. Basically, we found the most hilly area we could find with trees, and Dustin made me do wind sprints up and down it all day. And everybody else sat there and watched. For the sword fight, how ambitious was that? Action. Life is for the strong. We live by the strong. Uh, Dan and I had to get together and meet and go over with the fight choreographer and try to run through what we had to do and then going through all the different sides and angles you have to get of every shot to make it look fluidly moving together. It was the most dangerous thing to shoot. We have a really, really talented fight director. Philip is awesome in making sure that all the safety guidelines are covered and him being an ex-military medic also is a plus. Oh. And then of course the broken sword that Dan decided to give me about halfway in filming, so. It was fun because we were fighting and then halfway through the day I accidentally broke a sword. So I asked Larry to see his sword and then I gave him back my sword. Oh. And he, he discovered his sword is broke and he couldn't, I don't know how that happened. I talked to this weapons manufacturer and uh, it turns out one of the wells was incomplete. 
It's supposed to fuse and become all one piece of metal. You know, metal can bend, but this piece just sheared off right in Larry's hands. So it's, it's kind of a scary part that you just kind of have to work with. And you hide that fear on set while you're working on those particular scenes. Even though in the background you're secretly freaking out. <laughs> Everything up front is just like, okay, we got this, we got this. Oh dear, oh God, I'm so high. If I fall, I'm going to die. <laughs> there was like just tons of love. Everyone was having such a good time doing what they're doing. Are we, are we filming my Manning? Uh, no. Just a little bit. I'm not really sure if this is how they're done or not, <laughs> but I would like to have the French style nails done. I believe it's called French style. We had a lot of UMKC students volunteer this year. Uh, we had several people from Columbia. Even the people that are shooting our BTS are also working unpaid because everyone really loves what they're doing. We're all just dance party. <laughs> Charles Xavier, come to me, my X-Men. So you loved working on this film. What was your favorite part? My favorite part of the whole production really was getting to shoot at the Vale Mansion, because I've never worked at a location <laughs> that was that expensive. To my understanding, no one's ever been allowed to film at the Vale Mansion before. So we're like the first people to ever really film a film at the Vale Mansion. Well, as a tour guide, you probably know a little bit more about the mansion than just the average. I, yeah, I do. I know a lot. And I should, <laughs> after 35 years. Now, it's not a real happy house. And I say oh. that because Mrs. Vale only lived there a year and a half. She died of an overdose of laudanum. Oh. And then Mr. Vale never remarried. He remained a widower for 11 years after her death. Then he died. The house, they never had children. In fact, 31 room house, never had children that lived there. Now think about that, that's pretty impressive. And the city's been very meticulous about restoring it back to 1881. It's kind of crazy, you know, getting involved with things like this, you kind of find these locations and find these different places that you would have never known to have existed before. And just the simple fact that, you know, this mansion is in independence and it's beautiful on the outside and amazing on the inside. So you always wanted to do something like this story in particular. Can you speak to that at all? I just, I never got around to it. It always was like in the back of my head. I thought, oh, this would be fun to make. And it wasn't until I met Dustin, who actually knows how to get people together, knows how to, you know, how to network and get a bunch of people together to actually make a film that I thought this could actually be feasible. Action. But my dear fellow, there is one that can. But you can't be serious. I ain't talking about hunting, no? Is there any particular reason why you wanted to be involved in this project and bring these characters to the screen? I, I love working with Dustin. You know, I, I like to see new talent coming up and things like that. And, you know, if I can help other people with their vision, it gets, I learn and I grow from it and it gets me closer to my dreams. I'm along the same lines of I love working with Dustin. Everything he does, he usually puts his whole into it. And so you're kind of enjoying everything that he's enjoying. You're kind of feeding off his kiddish vibe he has. But at the same time, all his projects have kind of a semblance of meaning to them in the end, you know, something that could transcend to today's times and really kind of push a message to people and be like, oh, oh yeah, never thought of that. Interesting stories. Mm -hmm. Are you excited to see the final, the final product? product? <laughs> After all the hours and the bloodiness and scrapes and bruises, yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Retro Hop Productions plans to release the film in film festivals before putting it online for public viewing and sharing. To follow the film's progression, visit the official website retrohopproductions.com and don't forget to follow us on Facebook.